I'm Denny Gerwin. My contribution to the art access conversation about industry involves my faith in work. My grandparents were farmers, so my first job was on my grandpa's vegetable farm. At the peak of his operation, he was working 600 acres of tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, melons, and strawberries. At age 12, I was working 30 hours a week, making minimum wage while working alongside families of migrant workers on the farm. My paternal great-grandfather was laid off from a limestone quarry during the Great Depression. Nevertheless, he showed up every day just looking for work until they finally gave him something to do. The family mantra that he passed on to my dad and uncles was this, work harder than the guy next to you so he doesn't start telling you what to do. My first two years out of high school, I worked a full-time job in a plastic factory making interior automotive parts. I had become a mediocre student in my late teens. I had stopped trusting adults after meeting some pretentious preachers in my church. And after getting really sick while cutting up to 20 pounds every week as a wrestler, I saw that the adults didn't have anything figured out either, and I could usually get away with whatever I wanted as long as I pretended to play the games. My parents didn't have the means to support me in college, and given my performance, I doubt they would have if they could. I took classes at the community college and coached the wrestling team that I had grown up on. Eventually, the coach I was assisting encouraged me to enroll full-time at the state university. He said that my best was pretty good and that I should have some faith that if I invested myself fully, it would pay off. I nodded along, but I didn't know that my best was any good. I had just been trying to work harder than the guy next to me. I ended up in a ceramics class while studying art education at Bowling Green State University in Ohio. John Balistrieri was in his late 30s when I showed up. I became an aspiring pot jock after the Volkus and Friends workshop my second semester. Just to clarify, that's when Pete died. I had one of his bisquare tea bowls on my shelf for the next few months and a dorky little slab of clay that he'd scratched his buddy's name, Rudy, into with his fingernails. I was a dipshit sophomore trying to live by the work harder than the guy next to you mantra, but I had landed in that studio. It really fucked me up. When I was a senior, JB told me that I should have the words smarter, not harder, tattooed to the inside of my eyelids. Fifteen years later, John's voice is still the second loudest in my head next to my own. During my first summer in the BGSU studio, Balistrieri was on a Lou Reed kick. The song Work sticks with me. It is about Lou working with Andy Warhol in the factory and how Lou could never satisfy Andy's demand for more work. I managed to pay rent that summer by selling my intermediate-level pottery at farmer's markets and craft fairs while rounding out my first 12 months of making ceramics. What I remember most about that first year was that my superiors were treating me like a fellow oddball. They were amused by my ignorance and naivete, and that turned some of them off, but they all loved to challenge me. They toyed with my ambitions, but I ate that up, and I accepted as many challenges as I could. I dropped out of my art ed program during my first senior year after ignoring lots of rational advice. My peers in the studio were aspiring to be college professors. I liked their vision, so I took it as my own. When I said goodbye to BGSU, grad student Chuck Owens encouraged me by saying, you just keep up that work ethic and you're gonna be fine. Two years as a post back at the Hartford Art School yielded lots of studio time. Advanced ceramics majors were required to keep calendars. I calculated that I had 112 hours per week where I didn't need to be resting, so I committed to two full-time jobs. One job paid an hourly wage, the other job was 40 hours a week working in my studio. There were times that I would lock my studio door to keep people from bothering me during my scheduled work time. My professor, Walter Hall, gave me a couple good pieces of advice at that time. First, before you show up for work, sleep until you wake up, eat full meals, and then work your ass off. Second, don't critique while you work. There's plenty of time for that later. Just work. I love how frank he was with me. Matt Kelleher served as a sabbatical replacement for a semester in 2005, and I shared a studio with him. I was in there one night milling around trying to figure out what to do first, and he suggested that I was afraid to work. Well, he must have known that it was exactly what I needed. Thankfully, no one's had to tell me that again. Utah State University also welcomed my faith in work. It's the beehive state where the Mormons self-identify as worker bees. I was also fortunate to overlap with about 20 other people who wanted to fire wood kilns so we were firing about once per week. We'd all help each other out as needed. Anyone who was willing to work was in the mainstream crowd there. There wasn't much of a hierarchy that would divide undergrad from grad, or even student from faculty. It was just work. I have to admit that as a graduate student, I was scared of my future. Debt was piling up, and I didn't know if I'd ever be able to pay it back. 
What I did know is that I was making the most of my time there. I took full advantage of my three years in the studio and tried to keep believing that my best was pretty good. I saw it as a gamble, and I had gone all in. I left with about 10,000 pounds worth of problems. Maintaining an exhibition record with big, fragile sculptures on an adjunct instructor budget was professionally crippling. Fortunately, I made it during the boom of the digital age. I've come to accept that I'm an image maker. My images just happen to weigh more. Ten years into my teaching career, my faith in work has not deteriorated. I work alongside my students, and I have a drawing studio at home where I can get some work done when we need a break from one another. I still carve out work days where I sleep until I wake up, I eat full meals, and I work my ass off. I've been preaching a simple philosophy of show up, do all the things, make yourself useful, hold yourself and each other accountable, become a better person, and become a better artist. In a recent body of work, the character at a boy is all about working within very narrow parameters to become a singular version of oneself. I had different inspirations when I began making that body of work. But after working through several iterations, I began to see them as self-referential. I was also working to become tenured, after all. Through reflection, I recognize that I've changed for the better. Every arduous draft of an artist statement or of a teaching philosophy, and every goal set and project completed, it all changes us. My pottery satisfies my desire to work more immediately. As a full-time academic, it's challenging to find the time and space to create. The smallest artworks that I make come from an undergraduate exercise of throwing off a 25-pound hump. As a student, that was a half-day process resulting in about 100 things that had to be either edited or finished. Nowadays, I work off a smaller hump, slowing things down and just trying to keep something in process. I put about 30 minutes of wet work into a cup like this. It's a process that gives me joy, which complements my darker ideas found in my sculptures. Slowing down to completing a handful in a half-day applies that smarter, not harder thing. I trust that each idea eventually leads to better ideas, and in this case, to better pots. My grain jar series has developed in part just to fill kilns. The little program I teach in offers a single section of ceramics every semester, and our kiln is about 45 cubic feet. If we're going to see multiple firings each term, it's either going to fire half empty, or I'm going to fill it. Sometimes a prompt like that is all I need to be industrious. My faith in work is bolstered when I see students working. I'm sure it's true of any long process, but when I see a design major come into our studio and touch something as tangible as clay, then they immediately lose track of time and can hardly pay attention to instruction because they're captivated by a material that they can handle in real time. I see that they just want to work too. I teach mostly through demonstration, and I'm slowly learning when to get out of my students' way. That's all the time I have right now to talk about philosophy of work. Thanks for listening.